Hey guys, we just caught a mess of walleye in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We're being outfitted by Red Lake Outfitters. There's a forest fire, two forest fires, three forest fires. There's a forest fire over here. We're in the middle of everything, but we're still making it happen. Catching, cooking walleye, join me. Got one wild crafter. He's dressed up as a funny man from the past. <laughs> Find out how we got these guys. We're gonna turn these guys into a meal. Stick around. So we are right in the middle of the fires. Forest fire. Forest fire. Forest fire. Oh look, there's another one over there. <laughs> That's another fire. Fire, fire, fire. There, the wind's blowing back toward us. That's the first time the wind's come this direction. Yep. Look at, look at the lake. That wind just totally changed toward us. Oh, look at, look at this edge now. Yeah. All right, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> gonna filter our breath with our shirts. Like if you didn't know what was happening right now, you'd think this was like the last time the sun was ever gonna rise. <laughs> look at, that's the the sun's supposed to be up here pitch black now I'm at the back of the tarp the wind is blowing in our faces wow my eyes are stinging now you held on to that tight enough we can go for a real good ride she's like a live feed to CNN yeah. around here it's raining yeah. it's windy <laughs> yeah. Why did I sign up for this? What's it like over at the desk, everybody? Because <laughs> out here it's raining and it's windy. <laughs> There's some old man's beard. This stuff makes really good tender. Ball that up. Ball it all up. Let's see if we can do it right here. Pretty good. There's nothing that drives me more nuts than when my neck hair starts coming in. And I tried to do it a couple different ways with my sunglasses. That didn't work. I tried to do it by feel, kind of works. But using this viewfinder is the best way so far. You guys are gonna be my eyes. Bring my sanity back. Get all that itchiness off my neck. You guys are if you guys are contemplating growing a beard and you're not doing it because you think beards are itchy, it's not the case. Once you get this long, aside from all the wood smoke I got in there, use yourself a good beard oil. You're gonna have a nice soft beard. That won't need to be nearly, nearly as scratchy as when it grows in. Just give it some time. Let it come in and soften up for you. All right. A little bit of soap. A little bit of water. Get that jawline rocking again. Nice. Nothing like getting serenaded by loons while you do your hygiene.
There you go. Beautiful. Just a quick rinse. We're all set. It's like it even feels like it has soft water. Jared just uh, put the stick stove together. We're eating our leftover trout. The adventure continues. So tomorrow we have a bit of a dilemma. Since we're surrounded by fires, we don't know which way is best to travel. So we're gonna see about that. See what happens to these fires. And we'll make a decision from there. Trout from this afternoon and our cornbread from this afternoon. What's that? That was a fish head by the way. All right, so I'm walking down the lake and Jeremy, the big bear, <laughs> got me some balloons, because it's my birthday. So I'm uh, 40. I delivered them. <laughs> you deliver them? Yep. They're not for me. Oh, right, 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 right. Courtney, Courtney put something together in a package, gave them to Jeremy to give it to me. Yeah. So I woke up the day we were leaving and there was just an envelope there. And it's a Jeremy on it, so I'm pretty smart and I can figure stuff out. <laughs> She's like, did Jeremy get his package? I'm like, yeah, is it for my birthday? And then there was silence. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of chuckled. So yeah, I got myself a birthday present on my birthday out yeah. in Woodland Caribou. Yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm 40. Yeah, it's a milestone. It's uh, middle age. Yeah. Jeremy won't admit it. Are you not 40 yet? No. A couple more years? Oh, years and years. No, one more year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one year behind. One year behind. Yeah. So there you go. So uh, if I open this up on camera or not, I don't think so. But anyway, no. we'll probably see. Good. Probably a good one. Yeah. yeah probably knows how old you are. a big love note or something. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it All smelled right. like rose petals and. No, it didn't. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go down to the lake. How does it look down there? It's good. There's a little painted turtle in around where there was some fish guts. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, fine. Finally eating our leftovers. Not friendly like that snapping turtle. He just like <laughs> gone. Oh, he didn't want to stick around? Yeah. Yeah, mm. he was scared. How's the smoke look? Uh, not very smoky, but. No. Like everything's a little bit getting overcast, right? It's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to go down and check out to see if we're moving forward or not. So I don't pay a whole lot of attention to birthdays. In fact, when I woke up this morning, I forgot that yesterday I reminded myself that it was my birthday. My main thing today was just to uh, decide whether we're moving forward or not with those forest fires. So, yeah, that's kind of how I think. I guess I didn't really make a big deal about my birthday. I didn't really have, I had the occasional big birthday party, but being in July, you're not in school, so you're not around your regular friends. You're around your summer friends, so whoever happens to be around at the time. So, thanks, Courtney. <laughs> Got my balloons, my birthday balloons. And, uh, happy 40th birthday, Hans. She calls me Hans for short for handsome. Thanks, Courtney. <laughs> I 
I wish you guys were here too. My son Holden and Courtney. Maybe you guys can come out here one day. It will be a great adventure for you guys too. Yeah, I know you guys would enjoy it being out here. We can do an easier trip where we just enjoy the peace and quiet of being out. Good fishing. So our big story of course is looking that direction because that's the direction we need to travel today. And as per normal, a little blaze there and a blaze there, but not nearly as big as the blaze when we went to bed. So we are obviously wondering if we should go. Um, we talked a little bit about last night. We don't want to get trapped in the forest fire. So what uh, we may do is see how far as, as see how far we can get. You know, we don't know how far these fires are away from us. Like we have our spot, and if we hit that button, we tell um, Harlan that we're okay, and that's reassuring to him. But he can't send us communication back, so we don't have any news coming in. We just have what's on the ground here and they have access he has access to satellite maps interactive satellite maps that show where the fires are the size that they are and they're you know they're not uh they're not doing anything about these fires so they're just observing them at this point because we haven't seen any water bombers or anything like that we've been keeping an eye out so we don't know what it looks like that way so the risk of course is if we pack up and take off you know we might have to come back which is not a bad risk to take. We need to get to Irvine Lake for our takeout because that's where we're scheduled to be picked up at the end of this whole thing. I think we can get in there, check it out, come back, get a bite to eat, even catch some walleye here today. And that would be a decent day. So my breakfast has basically been just Stuff you could just eat on the go, so we got uh, peanuts, the trail mix for uh, two dollars at the dollar store, uh, dried banana, and dry cereal. So nothing super fancy, not very technical. If you really wanted to get technical, you could probably make little Ziploc bags and mix them, pre-mix them, so every morning you had probably for me it'd be two. Two, zip, two sandwich Ziploc bags because you don't want to have to stop and then make lunch every once in a while so have a big breakfast or big calorie rich carb rich breakfast and then you're good to go till two o'clock we have a big two o'clock lunch which is usually fish at least out here and then you're good till you know six seven o'clock it doesn't get dark here till like 10 it's crazy so it makes for a long day but uh yeah, try to stretch things out and then keep it inexpensive and non-technical. Anybody can grab a bag of cereal. I mean, it's not great to eat it dry, but you know, it's tolerable. Get yourself like some Honey Nut Cheerios and you won't mind so much. And then the, uh, all the nuts I do get are all unsalted. Um, you just don't need that much salt. So, yeah. It. Jeremy's been eating oatmeal, so he makes a little stick fire for breakfast. Doesn't eat the stick fire, but he eats the oatmeal. And those come in little packets, so you can grab a box of those for pretty cheap. Two packets of those will do do you sometimes. What well, you do eating? One, just one? Two. Two, yeah. Eat two. In the morning, and I sometimes throw a handful of that mix in. Yeah, yeah, that works good. Like you're, you get that oatmeal stuff, it's pretty sugary. Um, I don't like it. I find it too sugary, but yeah, you can add some nuts in there and you're all good to go. So I, I think we brought four or five bags of this because it's, we figure there's uh, 1200 calories in each, each bag of these. So you could technically just bring two of these bags and just eat that. If you wanted to get, uh, you know, you don't want to think too much about your meals and you can almost count on fish in these lakes. You could just count on it. Uh, bunch of those little twister tails to get you all the walleye you want. Yeah. yeah, we'll eat up and maybe 
maybe go for a paddle and an exploration. Jeremy's just putting on his uniform, his voyageur uniform. So from where we're at now, at the end of the lake, almost the end of the lake I guess, closer to where the fires were yesterday, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of smoke anymore. But that's uh, what it looked like yesterday and by the end of the day it was, uh, well as you saw it was full of, full of smoke. So here a helicopter up that way, well, not anymore, so I'll have a peek and see. If we, uh, we can get through here, won't be today, but tomorrow we should be able to catch some fish over in the next lake, which is Restool. So there's a couple portages to get in. We got a nice wind at our back, which is pushing us down the lake, which is nice not to fight it. Yesterday was a big fight with all those white caps trying to catch lake trout, not big lake, adventure lake. Anyway, we'll keep going this way and see what happens. Nice weather. We've got a little bit of clouds coming in, but not too bad. Better than yesterday. It was sweltering hot. So we're just coming into an area now. We actually paddled over uh, Cyclops Lake. Yep. Did a short portage. Uh, well, short. Five, five-ish. Five is a short. Well, short here is 100. The mo average portage here is 100. 100 meters, nothing. Uh, the 500s, you kind of feel them a little bit. Especially if you have to do, if you do double, uh, it's going to be quite a distance. But we're only single carrying today because we're day tripping. Um, yeah, we're in a spot that's seasonally shallow, which means it's going to be shallow because we're July and it's been super dry. So there's a bunch of rocks in front of us here. We have to figure out how to get around them. So there should be a little portage somewhere. You can see it's run dry here. It's uh, running through. And that portage should be over here. Let's have a peek. And it is. There's a... I mean, besides it being an obvious trail, you can look at the blazes here. The blazes are uh, basically taking a bit of the bark off the tree. And that's a historical way that uh, voyageurs marked their portages. They would blaze the tree on uh, both sides. So, I mean, probably won't be one on the other side. Oh, there, there you go. Blaze on the other side. And then that will tell you where the trail is. So this one here is just a short one. It's about an 80 just to bypass this little spot here uh, where it's all jammed up with rocks because the water is not high. If the water was high we might be able to get through but probably not. Probably still be an 80. So here's what we're looking at. Just got to jump over those boulders, head up that way and then we'll be back in the creek and then there will be another section about 150 uh, meters uh, but if it's shallow and we may have to portage the entire distance and then we get into uh, What lake are we going to? It's called? Ross Tool. Ross Tool, which has walleye and pike. So we're hoping to do, at least minimum do a shore lunch there That's the paddle route. It's dry as a bone So and there's no there's no portage around this section. We just have to walk through the tall grass so we're deciding if we should keep going just to have a better look at what we can't even see is smoke it's got to be off in a fair distance and if we actually can paddle it then we have to redo this tomorrow anyway so this was just to go have a look it was supposed to be low effort but if we have to walk this rest of this distance here it's not going to be low effort we can just go back to cyclops lake and there's actually a couple campers that we ran into ken and donna and they have a sat phone, but it's four bucks a minute to call. But they're in direct communication with 
Harlan, so we could we could call in and figure out what's going on. If we, it's actually safe to pass. Like there's not a whole lot of smoke there now. So it might be fine. But if we get a hold of Harlan, we can find out if it's safe. But that's going to delay us a day. It was going to delay us a day anyway. So we might go back to Cyclops. And uh, it just might not be worth the effort to oh, go all the way down here. It's hot. We have uh, issues with our filter, our water filter. It's not working very well. So we've got a liter of water each and then we have to boil or wait an hour for about a liter of water because it's not dripping. It's a brand new filter, so we don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, dealing with all these these different things that are beyond our control. Control is as we go. We go and we go. We can go, but we still have to go back. So I think I'm talking myself into just going back to Cyclops and we can fish on Haven and make that sat phone call and find out what's going on. It's all dry, Jer. So what are you doing? But I'm picking berries to bake a birthday cake for the Wooded Beardsman. So uh, this is going to be part of a birthday cake. Mixed berry. Mixed berry, cornbread, maple sugar. Oh wow. Big sparkly candles. <laughs> We we'll have those little pointy hats and those things that you blow that make a lot of racket. It'll be a, a full-on birthday party. And all our friends are invited? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They might not make it, but they can come if I, you want. Yeah, I sent GPS coordinates and uh, the uh, Red Lake Outfitters website. We'll see if they show up. That would be a big, big thing if my uh, wife and son showed up. <laughs> big production. Imagine that. Imagine that, just for the day? Yep. So we just talked to some people that just got dropped off in a plane uh, from Texas and Jeremy's got some news. Fish news, supper news, lunch news. Caught this one right from under those guys' noses. <laughs> yeah, just as they're getting dropped in, should we have any problems catching fish? Nope. And then uh, Jerry hooked up, so we got a little bit of lunch and we're gonna get a little bit more. Hey. Two for dinner. Fish. Fish number three. Yeah. You can land it. So optimistic. I don't think we've lost too many fish at the boat. Couple. It's not like it hasn't happened. Oh, so waiting for that line to bust. Yeah. That vintage green line that they don't sell ever again. Walleye. There we go. That's number three. Bigger one, big pike. Or a giant walleye. It's a pike, we're eating it? Yeah. Might as well. Depends on how big it is. If it's a good eating size. Woo! I didn't like that, did it? <laughs> That's a big net fail, there they Just flip the net around, there you go. The net goes the other way? Now you're... <laughs> There we go. Now I got a big mess. Oh, it's staying deep. Could be anything. Probably a good thing we didn't go that direction. Look at the fire now. It's all stoked back up. Big puffs. Crazy. One, two, three, 
four, five. Five walleye on our way back from the place we were hmm. trying to get to. That flyer is just raging again. It goes away every night and then every morning it wakes back up. It's kind of moving to the east. The wind is coming out of the west. But I did want to show you guys, if you could see, I'm going to scale these fish in a way that few people would bother to do anymore. A lot of people now, well, almost everybody now would not bother to scale a fish. So all I have is a fork. Everybody's got a fork. You don't need a special tool. And I'm just running backwards against the scales. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to keep the fatty flesh of the fish. In season one of the Wilderness Living Challenge, we ate nothing but fish. And if you're not sure what that is, that's uh, where we try to go out. Jeremy and I went out and we tried to live off the land. And we had to use whatever legal means necessary to do that. And at the time, there were no hunting seasons open. There's nothing we could hunt. So getting that animal fat or the fat period that you need for your diet was difficult. So we basically starved for those five days. And then since doing it, we started thinking more about how we prepare our foods and the kinds of foods we eat and the kinds of foods we don't eat. And why it is the way that way, why it is that that way. Um, whether our ancestors scaled fish or not is left for debate, of course, but uh, I'm sure some of them would have figured it out. If you could take a sharp rock and run it backwards, you can remove those scales and reveal underneath some fatty meat, fatty skin. So that's all I'm doing here. And I'm gonna show you how you can eat more than just the meat. You can also eat the stomach. You can eat the a lot of the organs. You can even eat the guts. Um, you can eat the brain and the eyes. And there's a fatty pocket be out behind the eye, which is actually quite good. The tongue is quite good too. It's comparable to eating that fat pocket in the brain. Um, but if you eat the whole thing like animals do, animals eat the whole thing. In fact, if you take your fish remains and you throw them away, something in nature is going to eat that. And the reason is because there's actually calories in it. Now, if you ask somebody what do they prefer to eat, would they eat a scaled walleye or would they prefer instead to fillet the walleye and simply deep fry it in some oil, some olive oil or vegetable oil of some sort. And the answer of course is they would deep fry it. And that's probably to our detriment because fish um, have good oils in them. I mean, people pay good money to get omega-3s. Meanwhile, they're throwing the skins of these animals away which are full of omega-3s same with the brain and the eyes and that knowledge is probably lost on us our ancestors would have known that real well they would have known that it was really 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 important to eat it eat the whole fish and if they didn't and they didn't want to then they probably weren't as healthy as the other ones and it was probably something that was taught to them eat the eyes, eat the brain. And there would have been the elder who when the kids would be like, oh, that's gross or something like that. And the elders would have eaten, eaten it as an example and said, you know, you're really missing out. And then when the kids got older, they would have learned to do the same thing. So as you can tell, it's a 
tedious process to get the scales off and it's messy. It's not something you want to do indoors because the scales fly absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to continue to scale this. I'm going to scale one fish each and that's going to be enough for us to eat. And there's going to be hardly any waste when I'm done with this. We won't be able to eat the bones and the fins. And technically you could probably eat the fins too. I know a lot of people who crisp them up in oil and eat them as well. Whether they contain any nutritional value or not is probably up for debate. But if there is something that your body can use, it sure will. This right here is the swim bladder. If we can tease it apart, it's a really good fatty part of a fish. If we can get it undone here. Fish. Good. Need some wood? Yeah. Enough for our lunch anyway. So it looks like we got a thunderstorm to contend with too. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's crazy. We got fire over here we got lightning over here we're gonna get rocketed again if we can get our lunch in our stomachs before that happens that's just wild rice it's like normal rice but it takes a lot longer to cook a lot more water a lot more heat. Oh no, there's extra food on our food. Gross. So before I left, my wife made some wadobo spice. It says, made with love by Woodbeard's wife, wadobo. I'll have to put that in the description if you guys want to make it. Scene. Oh no, I just got a drippy drip. Better not rain. I don't want it to rain here. Not until I eat. Then I can go in the tent have a nap. And then it can rain if it wants to. A big dark cloud. Big dark cloud. And it was rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. Whoa, drippy drip. We have a tarp, eh, Jer? Yeah. I don't know if we want to consider doing that or not. 
It might be alright. It might just be a shower. But if it's a lot of rain, our fire's gonna go out and our food's gonna not go in. I'm gonna be upset. I'm gonna be hungry. We've only eaten snacks all day on our journey to the fire. Head back. The good thing about it is that I'm not getting sunburned anymore. I'm pretty sunburned. The bad news is I can't find a happy medium. I'm gonna get poured on. Our fish will take a while to cook. But not any rush, but nature is sure giving us a run around here. Well, now it's raining. The fire's out. Well, it's, the fire's almost out. We've got a little bit left. There's our sad looking walleye over here. Poor walleye. Oh well. We're dry now. Ish. The fire's gonna get a drink over there too. Hopefully. Doggy boy, sure. What do you think of that, guys? <laughs> That's something you might worry about. It's like, it's not a, well, there's a thunderstorm there somewhere. But that's uh, getting doused with water right now. And if that's not fog, that edge here is becoming opaque with smoke. We may get enveloped with wood smoke from that forest fire just getting doused. So look over here. Like that's not fog rolling in. That's smoke rolling in. Yeah, look at, well look at this edge here. That edge is coming right toward us. Holy, we are about to get caked in wood smoke. Oh, does that send a chill down your spine? My legs, I just got a chill down my legs. Did are you? you? Yeah. There, the wind's blowing back toward us. That's the first time the winds come this direction. Yep. Look at, look at the lake. That wind just totally changed toward us. Oh, look at look at this edge now. Yeah. All right, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> gonna filter our breath with our shirts. Jeez, look at that! It's coming right toward us. Sorry about the sound, but I want to catch a little bit too. The wind is coming right toward us. Wow. There, yep, that's wood smoke. 
Oh, dude. What are we going to do, man? The thunderstorm must have hit that fire and then the wind has changed direction. We're just going to be living in this smoke suit. That's a ton of wood smoke. Wow. Holy shit. That, yeah, look at the islands at the back. Remember how you could see them two seconds ago? Yeah. Look at that. They completely disappeared. That's insane. Now, if you're worried about breathing wood smoke because you thought you might get cancer, <laughs> we're right in it now. Firefighters breathe this stuff all the time, especially forest fire. But then they have higher incidence of... Uh, Lung cancer. Look at that. It looks like a storm. Holy shit. Look at that. You cannot see the other edge now. That is intense, man. The, the wind is exactly the opposite it was. There, it stopped. Did you feel it stop? Sort of. Is it going to blow back the other way? getting sucked into the void that the storm left, I think. Wow. This is not clouds. That is smoke. It smells like campfire everywhere here. Yeah, it's only 4.30 too, so <laughs> it should be really bright. The sun's still way up high in the sky. And, uh... Yeah. We might see some ash. Yeah, we might get some ash falling down. Oh, there's a lot of, yeah. Those guys say they said that they had to cancel flights in Red Lake because of the amount of ash coming down from those fires. Look how dark it is, it's four o'clock and that's not a rain cloud, that's, that's smoke. Good thing our lungs are used to that smoke. <laughs> yeah. If you had asthma, you'd be in rough shape right now. It should only last a while and then it should blow. It should blow back the other way. It's got to be all that heat. You know when you put off and it's got to be just blowing back. That's, that's an intense amount of... Look how dark it is, man. Like, just by comparison, look at... This guy on that side is kind of normal ish. And this side here is just black. That's some super good camera lighting though. Yeah. Nice and diffuse. You could do a whole photo shoot. Jeez. You could do a whole photo shoot like that. So the wind's coming this way, which means that thunderstorm might also come this way. Are you going to get the thunderstorm again? intense when um, we talked to the guys or was it that Ken and um, Ken and Donna said that we might have to get ready for some smoke today yeah so we did get a warning through the sat phone they had mentioned that um, we'd have to be prepared for this so wow look how crisp that viewfinder is with that lighting oh, oh yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> you, super the event the last time you saw it like that's awesome lighting. We can do all. Let's do our thumbnails now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can taste it. You can taste that smoke. Cool. Sure. Wow. Brutal. Oh, yep. You're right. Yeah. I'm right above us. Get ready to get jump. We made a little tarp shelter here, so to dive in it just yet. <sighs> Look at that. You can't see the we can't see the far shore anymore. Whew. It's intense, man. How strong is that smoke? It's pretty strong. Talking to a guy who doesn't can't have a great sense can't of smell, smell. But you'd be in trouble. Oh, you can't breathe it, you can't feel it in your throat. Not even? No. Oh. That's some dirty air, man. That's some dirty air. 
Talk about a carbon footprint on that. A little bit of carbon coming off that footprint. Whew. Tell me that that fire doesn't look like it's dusk right now. It's just about to turn dark forever. Like if you didn't know what was happening right now, you'd think this was like the last time the sun was ever going to rise. <laughs> the, apocalypse. the apocalypse, man. Seriously, look, 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 look. You can't see the other side anymore. Literally zombie apocalypse, man. It is like dusk. It's like a lunar eclipse. Like, I, have you ever seen it go this dark with a lunar eclipse? Solar eclipse? Oh, solar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I get my terminology I saw it get right. I real dark with the lunar eclipse one time. <laughs> a solar eclipse? Never this dark. Does it get this dark? Does no, it? No, I don't know. This is insane, man. The last time we had a good one, they locked us up in our school rooms. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, it's crazy. I kind of keep feeling like there's particles in the air too. But maybe it's just from our fire. You think there are particles? Well, like, well there's smoke particles. Stuff hitting my eyelashes. Oh, like, you mean like ash? Look, look how dark the viewfinder is now. Yeah. It's yeah. pitch black. It's like dusk, man. Yeah. It's like dark. Crazy out. Wow. Wow. That is insane, man. Like, you're not even... Do you know how dark it is? Like, it's ins That's crazy. It's crazy. It's almost flashlight dark now. Like we are, we are in... <sighs> oh, we're in a fireplace, man. This is... Holy shit. The camera can't even focus on me anymore. No. Doesn't have any idea who I am. <laughs> Look. Oh yeah. Look at how dark that is. Yeah. Yeah, it's really kind of capturing the moment right now. Because it is, it is that dark. It's this dark, man. Look at look at the glow from the fire. Like that, you don't get that at four o'clock. Okay, now we're getting some wind. Wow, wow. Can you guys see anything anymore? This is like two minutes later. You can't see across the lake anymore. There's the fire I'm making this stuff up. You literally, you can't see the hand in front of my face. Wow. You want to know? You want to know what would happen? Oh, I can't even breathe. You know what would happen? If an, if a meteor hit the earth, this is what it would look like for three months. It's crazy. I mean, that's the sun's over here. The sun's behind me now. It's supposed to be behind me. Wow, dude. Look at that's the the sun's supposed to be up here. That's the other side of the lake, man. This is nuts. Crazy. I can't see I can't see the hand in front of my face, man. Pitch black now. I'm at the back of the tarp. The wind is blowing in our faces. Holy shit. Jesus. Holy. It's crazy. That wind switched directions completely. You can't even see me anymore. Where's the flashlight, dude? Holy shit, man. I just walked here in night shot mode. Did you put it in night shot? Yeah. Dude, it's pitch black and it's like 4... 4.30. Yeah. Holy... The wind coming off the lake now is crazy. Oh. 
That's nuts. Is that from the fire going out? Well, or just all the smoke coming down. Here we're we're on like dueling cameras here. Oh, we're both trying to catch this footage. Smoke in my eyes now, like crazy, man. Yeah, I feel it stinging. Yeah, really badly, actually. Yeah. I gotta watch my footing. I can't see anything anymore. Yeah. I'm. I might go grab my flashlight so that I can go tie the canoe down extra well. At least it's blowing it towards us and not away from us. I don't think you want to go down there, to be honest, man. I think the. Well, I probably couldn't pick the canoe up in this wind anyway. Holy. I'm going to put my camera away because it's getting wet here even though we're under a tarp. Wow. My eyes are stinging now. There's only droplets of rain. Oh. Probably need to pull that fish off onto the plate so it's gonna burn, eh? I just checked it, it didn't seem too bad, but it's gonna be hard to eat now because it's overcooked. But if we take it off and it hard we're not gonna be able to eat it anyway. We'll just film it in night shot mode. I don't know. You know what it's letting up now? The wind is anyway. Yeah, well and you can see a bit better than you could a couple minutes ago. There, it's letting up. I think we're through the middle of it. Wow. Crazy! Still my eyes are stinging like crazy. I can barely breathe, I'm just puffing. Four thirty-nine, and it's almost like sunset. Wild. Wild, man. I don't know if our walleye is any good anymore. Oh, walleye. Whew. Zombie apocalypse. End of the world. Armageddon. Walleye. Unbelievable. Oh, my eyes are stinging. We got thunder and lightning here. That fire must be getting doused. Just doused. Something happened to switch, switch that wind toward us. I think for the lights coming back, that means we should be through it. If the wind could switch back the other way, we'd be all right. Brutal. You held on to that tight enough. We can go for a real good ride. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you're holding on to that. Yeah. You'd fly, you'd fly across the lake. Yeah. Use it as a sail on the canoe. Woo. You saw some lightning again? Yeah. There's the thunder. This is like a live feed to CNN. Yeah. We're out here. It's raining. Yeah. It's windy. Yeah. Why did I sign up for this? What's it like over at the desk, everybody? Because <laughs> out here it's raining and it's windy. <laughs> Holy shit. Can't wait till I'm editing this. Because I won't be doing it out here. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Oh, smoke! Uh. Are you in your tent? Okay. Are you in there? I'm in here. You got the fish in there? Yeah. Is there room? started coming down pretty hard so we ran for it couldn't uh, keep out of the rain under that little tarp and the wind was just wicked so I grabbed the fish and ran and uh, I had to get out of my voyageur clothes they were soaking soaking wet there'll be a while drying out and we uh, are here in my tent and we're gonna try some of this fish we'll show you one taste I guess the other camera's getting way too wet, so I just got the GoPro. 
Jeremy salvaged the fish. We are right in the middle of it now for sure. There's lightning, thunder right above us. Cool. Brutal. Never seen anything like that. That's for sure. It's a calm, now it's a combination of rain clouds. And it's almost like the smoke is dissipated a little bit. Although like, it's hard to tell anymore. Yeah. I still feel like there's a little bit of smoke. Oh, probably. But it's getting it's getting knocked down for sure by the rain a little bit. Those particles. It's just pouring. So we're just gonna take a couple bites of the walleye. Maybe we'll finish up the rest of the meal. Maybe we won't. Yeah, the rest of the day looks like this. But uh, surprisingly, it's actually perfectly cooked. So there's that. After all that. All right, guys. I think that's it for this video. You can subscribe or not. I don't care. Subscribe to Jeremy on Wildcrafter on YouTube. And uh, if you guys want to come out to Woodland Caribou Bench Park. <laughs> you still want to come out? Let uh, Harlan know at Red Lake Outfitters because it's probably not going to be like this when you come. All right, guys. See you later. Oh, lightning! Thank you.